30 years, there has been a massive redistribution of wealth. And I know that term gets my Republican friends nervous. Problem is, this redistribution has gone in the wrong direction. Trillions of dollars have gone from the middle class and working families to the top one-tenth of one percent who have doubled the percentage of wealth they now own. Yes, I do believe that we must end corporate loopholes such that major corporations year after year pay virtually zero in federal income tax because they're stashing their money in the Cayman Islands. Yes, I do believe there must be a tax on Wall Street speculation. We bailed out Wall Street. It's their time to bail out the middle class, help our kids be able to go to college tuition free. So we pay for this by due demanding that the wealthiest people and the largest corporation who have gotten away with murder for years start paying their fair share. Well, let's get specific. How high would you go? You've said before you'd go above 50 percent. How high? We haven't come up with an exact number yet, but it will not be as high as the number under Dwight D. Eisenhower, which was 90 percent. But it will be. I'm not that much of a socialist compared to Eisenhower. But, but, but we are going to end the absurdity, as Warren Buffett often reminds us. That's right. That billionaires pay an effective tax rate lower than nurses or truck drivers. That makes no sense at all. There has to be real tax reform and the wealthiest and large corporations will pay when I'm president. And may I point out that under Ronald Reagan's first term, the highest marginal rate was 70 percent. And in talking to a lot of our neighbors who are in that super wealthy millionaire and billionaire category, great numbers of them love their country enough to do more again in order to create more opportunity for America's middle class. Secretary Clinton, Americans say that health care costs and wages are their top financial concerns. And health care deductibles alone have risen 67 percent over the past five years. Is this something that Obamacare was designed to address? And if not, why not? Well, look, I believe that we've made great progress as a country with the Affordable Care Act. Uh, we've been struggling to get this done since Harry Truman, and it was not only a great accomplishment of the Democratic Party, but of President Obama. I do think that it's important to defend it. The Republicans have voted to repeal it nearly 60 times. They would like to rip it up and start all over again, throw our nation back into this really contentious debate that we've had about health care for quite some time now. I want to build on and improve the Affordable Care Act. I would certainly tackle the cost issues because I think that once the foundation was laid with a system to try to get as many people as possible into it to end insurance discrimination against people with pre-existing conditions or women, for example, that yes, we were going to have to figure out how to get more competition in the insurance market, how to get the costs of particularly prescription drugs but other out-of-pocket expenses down. But I think it's important to understand there's a significant difference that I have with Senator Sanders about how best to provide quality, affordable health care for everyone. And it's, it's a worthy debate. It's an important one that we should be it engaged is, in. It is a worthy debate. Uh, Senator Sanders, a quick response, and then we'll get uh, into health care again later. I am on the committee that helped write the Affordable Care Act. We have made some good progress. Now what we have to take on is the pharmaceutical industry that is ripping off the American people every single day. I am proud that I was the first member of Congress to take Americans over the Canadian border to buy breast cancer drugs for one-tenth the price they were paying in the United States. But at the end of the day, no doubt, the Affordable Care Act is a step forward. I think we all support it. I believe we've got to go further. I want to end the international embarrassment of the United States of America being the only major country on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all people as a right, not a privilege. Um. And also, also, what we should be clear about is we end up spending, and I think the Secretary knows this, far more per capita on health care than any other major country, and our outcomes, health care outcomes, are not necessarily right, Nancy, good. I really right, wish you'd I'm come sorry, back Governor, to me on this one, John, because we've actually found a way to reduce Governor? hospital costs. So whenever we come Governor, back you're breaking the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like I'm to sorry, we're going to have to cut for a commercial. We'll be right back here from Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa. Thank you. Oh my gosh.
Come on. Okay, it's working now. Sorry. I was looking on CNN to do their reality check, their fact check type of thing. Seeing what they said. Okay. Previous. I guess they're still fact checking. Uh, Clinton on minimum wage. Uh, apparently, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, through her support, that that's not even how. You, never mind. Behind a 12-hourly minimum wage at Saturday's debate, but that's lower than the 15-hour minimum backed by Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. It's a small state. Oh boy. She's saying if you go to $12, it would be the highest historical average we've ever had. Then that's the smartest way to move forward, she says. Why? Because it's safe? I think $15 would be a lot better. You know, because it's, I mean, right now it's ten eighty six. I don't know. I mean, I don't believe in trickle-down economics. But I don't see any fact-checking there. I mean, well, what are they doing over here? Oh, it says verdict true. Let's see here. Let's see. Bernie Sanders, reality check. Sanders on vets with PTSD. When he talked about when the veterans come back, we need to take care of them, which is absolutely true. And he talks about long-term consequences. Remember, that was maybe 15 minutes ago. 500,000 who came home with PTSD and traumatic brain injury. There's been roughly 2.6 million vets served in Iraq and Afghanistan. My great nephew, you believe I have a great nephew, also served there. Let's see, and that verdict was true. Well, that's pretty generic. How could he mess up on something like that? I don't see anybody getting caught on anything through the CNN reality check. You know, that's a good place to go to if you watch the debates. I guess I should see if I'm live. I've got to make sure I'm still live. Okay, I am. Let's take a look at the chat room. I see I have 52 more messages. And see what they said about the debate. Let me scroll down. Let's see. If you wrote anything recent, you're just going to have to wait a minute. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh. Apocalypse in talking about the pharmaceuticals. They were discussing the pharmaceuticals. At that time, they were talking. He said, the advertisements you see on the television are scary. It's all about the side effects. Let's look at that. There's only two countries that allow pharmaceuticals to advertise on the telly. That's Denmark and that's the United States. So it's kind of bizarre that they're even allowed. Well, what the hell is that? I hear something in my ear. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, it's CNN talking. The reality people. Alright. Oh, come on, stop. Okay, it finally stopped. Alright, where were we? The side effects have to list all the effects during the studies. That's true. So that it can be truth in advertising. I believe they call it truth in advertising. Interesting concept. And I just lost my whole chat room. I hope you can still hear me. I really hope you can still hear me. What the hell? I went to Stabby McHug's chat page. I didn't know you had a page, Stabby. Huh. And, um... I'll go ahead and promote Stabby a little bit since I'm at his page. His last podcast was on Trump Stump at the Nugget, 1029, Part 2 of 2. He went to go hear Trump. So if you want to hear his thoughts on that, go see Stabby McHugs on Spreaker.com. All right. Let me go back to my chat room. Boy, they must be typing really fast. Let's see the numbers going up. And I like this topic. I like talking about debates. You know, 
And, and this is an important debate, in my opinion. So, more than Spreaker drama. But we can discuss that too later. Let's get through this first. Because it matters, right? Okay. Oh, you're a hostile RD? I'm sorry. I'm glad you got something to eat. RD is one of the chatters. You can be too. Because I, I like talking about change and affecting social justice. These are things that I'm interested in. I don't know about you, but that's some things I'm interested in. Let's go down to, okay. See. All right. Apocalypse says, Quote, who has next to zero taxes? The American taxpayer, end quote. And of course, Stabby is saying risk versus benefit. I think that's in terms to the pharmaceutical side effects. Um, is it worth the risk, the medication that you want to take? Oh, keeps on moving. Hold on. All right, let me scroll up some more. Okay, R.D., you, you say this, quote, If you want to tax the F out of the rich, you might as well get rid of money altogether. End quote. Well, the rich are not paying their part if you look at the percentage of what they're paying as to the middle class person in the United States. There is a great diversity. You know, disparity is what I meant to say. Great disparity between the two. Yeah, they need to pay their part. That's all there is to it. Uh, let's see. And there's problems in all the world. I mean, that's true. It's how we handle it that can make a difference. So, um, but you, everybody has their thoughts. And everybody's entitled to their thoughts and to be able to say that in a normal manner. Let's see. Well, at least, uh, R.D., you're saying Stabby's trying to avoid the gray area tactic. Uh, maybe he is, but I think he's being truthful. What? No. Stabby, no. Let's go back to the debate. Let's stay on topic here. We're going to stay on topic. <sighs> okay, well, at least it makes it easier to scroll through. And I don't think R.D. is full of conspiracy theories. He has his ideas, and I welcome them. R.D., what do you mean you thought you were at the alternative? Okay, all right, you're back on, on page. Well, what's true with Denmark? Uh, they allow pharmaceutical companies to advertise on their telly. At least a year and a half ago they were. That's the last time I checked it. They may have changed it. I, I don't know. Oh my gosh. I can't say that. Um, am I echoing, by the way? Or do I sound okay? Huh? Oh, I, I don't even get that. I'm reading in the chat room. Oh, be nice to R.D. I mean, he's an expecting father. What the hell? <sighs> They're trying to get me upset. It's okay. Um, Apocalypse says this. I, I don't know if this has to do with the debate. It says R.D. is part of a neo-nihilist fascist group. Nihilism? Nihilism doesn't even make sense. Because a nihilist believes nothing has value. There, nothing has meaning. But in the very statement, when you say nothing has meaning, that has meaning. So how can he be that? I, I disagree with you, Apocalypse. For Dutch domination. Oh, come on. Well... I guess money is a good thing to talk about. I mean, truly. Because there has to be some exchange of energies. RD, you have to agree. There has to be some exchange of energies. And that is what we have money for, to represent that. Okay. Well, let's go back to the debate, shall we? Unless you guys have anything else to say. <laughs> 